On tonight's CTV News, the Prime Minister was in the Waimakariri district today answering the tough questions on asbestos and from four-year-olds. This is CTV News, I'm Grant Mangan. WorkSafe New Zealand was in court today applying for an extension to investigate Fletcher EQR's handling of asbestos. Now the Earthquake Recovery Minister and Prime Minister John Key have weighed in, reassuring Cantabrians they shouldn't be worried about getting sick. Estos, the Earthquake Recovery Minister, says the Canterbury Home Repair Programme is one of the best examples of asbestos investigation and management in New Zealand. The minister released a statement today around Fletcher's handling of asbestos. He says EQC firmly believes the Canterbury Home Repair Programme has not exposed Canterbury residents to any more asbestos risk than anyone else in New Zealand. The Prime Minister has now weighed in, reassuring Cantabrians. But I wouldn't want people to get overly frightened about the situation. I don't think they need to do that. I'm comfortable that people should feel a high degree of confidence that everything will be OK. The government and Fletcher building are confident asbestos has been handled responsibly. To put it into perspective, WorkSafe New Zealand has investigated six cases out of 100,000 home repairs. They are looking very closely at the situation. I mean, the issue for WorkSafe is whether they need to determine whether prosecution should be undertaken, and I don't think they're in a position to determine that yet. The press reports Fletcher EQR has had a policy of testing asbestos in earthquake damaged suburbs since the repair program launched. Since 2012, it's tested all houses built between 1940 and the 1980s, when asbestos was known to be used in construction. Canterbury Medical Officer of Health Alistair Humphrey told CTV News earlier this week, depending on the outcome of the investigation, Cantabrians should be concerned. This is going to cause anxiety among the public. And what we want to see is a proper risk assessment process so that if I have had my house worked on, I can call someone up, get some information, say, am I at risk here? Dr Humphrey's concerned people won't know if they have asbestos in their homes. Sadly, EQC have not kept a record of who's had what done. So there's 35,000 homes, there's no record of what's going on. The Prime Minister's also taking an interest. Well, I'm getting advice uh, advice on it, so, and, you know, reasonably regular advice on what's going on. But in the end, at the moment, we're just waiting to see what um, WorkSafe come back with. WorkSafe New Zealand will have more information on the matter once their investigation is complete. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. The development of the Rangiora Health Hub began today with the first turn of soil by Prime Minister John Key. Breaking ground in North Canterbury, Prime Minister John Key dug into the ground of the development for the Rangiora Health Hub. The $7 million facility will be integrated with the hospital as a family health centre instead of providing general practice service. Why Makariri MP Kate Wilkinson facilitated the precinct's concept and says the first shovel dug in by John Key is important for the Rangiora families and community. Well, I think the good thing is we've had the PM here to turn the first first sod, so um, and that shows a commitment. Um, I, I don't know whether you heard me, but as I'm retiring, I'll have more time, so I'm going to be on these guys' heels and making sure that it goes you know, goes to plan because uh, you know, we need it here, and uh, the community are really looking forward to it. It shows the community the government's promises to build better healthcare facilities is being fulfilled. Kate Wilkinson is planning to retire from Parliament this year, but she says her commitment remains with the community. I sort of see it as a bit of my legacy, really. Um, it's, we, we thought about it about three years ago. So we've been sort of, uh, there were discussions about after hours service. Uh, since then, we've got the commitment to do a new health hub, which is fantastic. And we've now got an award winning 24 um, service for paramedics. So actually, Rangiel is doing pretty well. The earthquake saw damage done to many hospitals and health facilities across Canterbury. Kate Wilkinson says two years on, the health community continues to move forward. We, we've obviously had the earthquakes and, and the, the damage to Christchurch Hospital and others. I mean, we're pretty small out here, so you can understand that. But of course, we, we're just excited about it and want it yesterday. Brendan Grofsky, the project director for the Canterbury District Health Board, says he's pleased the need for the facility will soon be able to be met. Rangiora has been waiting a few years now. Um, we have had issues with earthquake, of course, as all of Canterbury has, and that's put a lot of things behind. But we're well and truly underway now, and we're full steam ahead, which is really good. Building will begin on the site next to Rangiora Hospital next month. Brendan Grofsky, the project director, is excited for the work to begin. 
Very excited. Always like this part of the project and always like the end when we get to cut the ribbon and open the doors and actually let people in and use the facility. The Rangi Ora Health Hub is to be completed by May next year. Joel Batista, CTV News. The Prime Minister visited Northwood Preschool and Nursery today, answering tough questions from interested four-year-olds. Laughter, noise and four-year-olds. Prime Minister John Key had a lot to look forward to when he visited Northwood's preschool and nursery today. Greeted with smiles from infants as young as three months old to four years, the Prime Minister explored the Christchurch Play Centre, talking to children and parents. The last time a minister visited the site was when former Prime Minister Helen Clark opened the preschool in 2002. Question time began on the mat when Prime Minister Key faced up to some enthusiastic four-year-olds. Asking what the Prime Minister's favourite colour is, where he lives and what his cat's name is. The full name is Moonbeam Smoky Fluffy Key. And the reason for that is that our daughter when she was about eight, she wanted to call her Moonbeam. And our son who was about six at the time wanted to call her Smoky. And my wife wanted to call her Fluffy and I wasn't allowed to have a name. <laughs> it was when John Key explained what he does as Prime Minister that really got the future voters listening. With a bunch of other people we have to make the rules. So sometimes mum and dad will agree with the rules and sometimes they won't. <laughs> and if they really don't agree with them, they biff us out. <laughs> the students had decorated their walls with what they would do if they were Prime Minister. Four-year-old Julia wants to ban animal testing. Nikki wants to sort out poverty and Mark wants to see boats back in the water. High hopes for ambitious under fives. We'll see you, we'll see you at that time again. Joel Batista, CTV News. The provincial chambers are one of Christchurch's and the country's most important and historic buildings. However, restoring it could leave the Christchurch City Council further in debt. These are the country's only surviving provincial government buildings. They date back to the early days of Christchurch's settlement and it's in these buildings that decisions were made about Canterbury's future. 156 years after the first stone was laid, local body politicians are now debating when the building should be repaired. There's no question these buildings should be saved. However, with a $50 million repair bill, the work won't be cheap. Repair bills could even be as high as $70 million. Due to shortfalls, insurance will only cover $30 million of the work. Repairing the buildings would see the council hemorrhaging up to another $40 million. The repair work is due to start later this year. However, the City Council's Finance Committee Chairman believes the city shouldn't rush to repair the chambers. I mean, clearly that's uh, come in a lot um, over budget, uh, and I think we'll find that a lot of our repair programme um, will have the same results. So it's a matter of actually sitting down, seeing how much cash we've got at the moment and uh, trying to work out what the priorities are. The buildings are a great example of New Zealand's Victorian Gothic architecture. When the February 2011 earthquake hit, a stone chamber collapsed and both stone towers were deconstructed. Yeah, it, it's got some, some pretty severe damage, but I mean, it, it's quite repairable. Um, and I mean, clearly it's quite an important uh, building from a historic perspective, so you know, I, I think it's something we'd be keen to repair, whether we repair it now or sometime in the future, that's a different story. Councillor Manji says the council should follow other countries' examples. Overseas, it's, it's not uncommon for um, heritage buildings to be, you know, simply mothballed for um, many years until there's an appropriate time to fix it. So, as long as it's safe and it's waterproof, um, you know, there's, there's no um, urgency to repair it now. Councillor Manji says the council will continue working through its options following the release of the Cordamentha report. He hopes the council will have a plan forward by the end of next month. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. A coroner has renewed calls for cyclists to wear high visibility clothing after releasing findings into the death of a Christchurch woman. Coroner David Crera today released findings into the death of Joanne Marjorie Drummond of Avondale. Drummond died at the scene from serious crush injuries to the chest. Crera recommends cyclists take appropriate steps to make themselves more obvious to other road users. This includes auxiliary lighting and high visibility clothing. Last year, Wellington coroner Ian Smith called for compulsory high-vis clothing. Spokes chairperson Don Babe says high-vis is no guarantee of safety. It becomes an extra burden for a cyclist if they need to have high-vis clothing. Like if I just wanted to jump on my bike and go down the shop to buy a pint of milk, well, to have to put, stop and put high-vis clothing on is um, it's quite a barrier. 
that research has shown that um, high-vis clothing doesn't actually make much difference to uh, the outcome for cyclists. So um, it seems a bit uh, of a waste of money to impose a cost on a cyclist when there's no well, there's no guarantee or there's no even evidence of increased um, chances of being safe. So, While many cyclists already choose to wear high vis, making it mandatory could be a barrier for some. Last year, three cyclists died on Christchurch roads. The death of student nurse Shala Hairewa on Lincoln Road last month prompted a revisited debate around cycling safety. Don Babe supports formal education programs as a way to increase understanding between cyclists and drivers. Ultimately, all road users have a responsibility to be aware of each other. A New Zealand Transport Agency expert panel is looking into the cycling safety issue. Recommendations are expected in September. Coming up, construction sites are no longer the domain of men. Flash News 7 at Red and Black Sport gets a new title as well, but we'll still be talking every week to the movers and shakers in sport. Red and Black Sport, Monday night, 7.30, here on CTV. Yuck, look at all this moss and lichen. I'm not getting up there, not in these heels. Time to call Moss Buster. Moss Buster is a no-bleach, non-abrasive, biodegradable solution that has over 35 years of proven results. You can buy Moss Buster online for less than half the cost of other well-known products and can be yours for less than a dollar a litre. You just spray it on and let Mother Nature do the rest, or Moss Buster can do it for you. Check out our website or call the Moss Buster crew for a free quote. Moss Buster, 0800 88 1000. Located at the foot of the Port Hills, Berrymead Golf offers a spectacular location for any occasion. Make a dream wedding a reality with private use of our green function room, outdoor garden courtyard, large marquee and stunning gazebo. Or for your next conference, enjoy the relaxed atmosphere of Berrymead Golf, offering a private, spacious conference room with special deals to make any break a true break. All with customised catering from the WOW Cafe. Berrymead Golf, 50 Berrymead Park Drive, right next to the Berrymead Heritage Park. Action Removals, offering short or long-term storage facilities, full packing services, comprehensive rates, all fully insured and with six vehicle sizes to choose from. Earthquake Repairs, Action Removals, pack, move, store and return your valuable possessions stress-free. Action Removals, a family business that has been operating in Christchurch for over 10 years. Action Removals, your one-stop removal service on time, every time. 0800 222 526. I'm Chris Lynch. Join me for CDV's new current affairs show, Lynched, every Monday at 8.30 right here on CDV, where I talk to the decision makers and those responsible for running our city. This weekend marks the 20th anniversary for CPIT's National Academy of Singing and Dramatic Art. NASDA is one of New Zealand's best dramatic schools, producing versatile performers with skills in acting, singing and dancing. Many graduates now work in the performing arts all over the world. TV show host Erin Simpson is one of the successful graduates who will join students and industry partners to celebrate the two-day event. NASA head Richard Barrett says real-world performance experience is a key part of the program's success. The event will host New York music theatre icon John Pacino, who will perform with NASDA students on Sunday night. A construction site is no longer a man's world, as more and more women are picking up a hammer. Marcus Gibbs went to meet a few in training, who will soon be assisting with the Canterbury rebuild. In Christchurch, you're just as likely to see a woman at the end of a hammer than a man. A high demand for Christchurch rebuild workers have seen women like Jane learn a new trade. The businesswoman swapped a job behind a desk for something more practical. I really felt um, with the earthquakes in Christchurch that I really wanted to put, have more hands-on 
dealing with the people and, and the rebuild. CPIT is pushing for more women to consider a career in trades. Definitely there's been a big increase uh, of women coming into trades, all sorts of trades, uh, painting and decorating, plasterboard, electrical, uh, especially in carpentry, a, a big increase in women in trades, yeah. To put it into perspective, this time last year 206 females were learning trades at CPIT. This year that number's grown to 227. That's more than 13% of CPIT's trade students. When I first turned up I thought I was going to be the only one. and I've turned up at campus and there's heaps of us. So a class of about 16, we're, we're seeing up to four or five women in each class now. So we're once upon a time it might have only been uh, one woman in three or four classes. So 18 year old Erica is enjoying the work. She loves the fact she's helping out with the rebuild. Just really had a real interest in it. And it, yeah, it's just something that I really love doing. Today these two women are building homes. Tomorrow it could be something even larger. Jane dreams of working on one of the city's anchor projects. She has a good chance of doing just that. Already potential employers are knocking on her door. Even when I speak to people now, when I'm just sort of like starting out um, with carpentry, the number of job offers I've had from people saying, no, come and work for me now full time. And I've probably had about eight job offers and they're like, as soon as you're finished, I'll take you on. Employers out there are now quite confident at employing uh, women so that's really good. Uh, they can see that they have different skill sets, that they're there to prove themselves, they're dedicated and everything like that so there's, there's no disadvantages really out in the workforce between male and female now. And it's not just nails being hammered into place, barriers are being broken too. I have had some of the guys say to me, I'm never going to do what a woman tells me to do. But that soon changes and I think they understand that when you've got an equal passion for them and you want to learn as much as they do and you're as capable as they do, that suddenly disappears and, you're, and then there's just no gender stereotype at all. As the rebuild continues, CPIT expects more women will want to learn a trade. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. Canterbury farmers are bracing themselves for the worst of winter. Heavy snow down south earlier this week has Canterbury farmers worried it's an indication of the same happening to them. While sub-zero temperatures descended on Canterbury, most of the region escaped snow. Canterbury farmers usually take snow in their stride, but big dustings that last a long time can be difficult. Federated Farmers Meat and Fibre Chairwoman Jeanette Maxwell says it wears them down because every job takes longer. In 2006, it took eight weeks before snow disappeared from her Mount Hutt farm. Still to come, the sport traffic and weather updates. Red and Black Sports match of the day in the Press Cup this week. It's on our screen, Sunday 12.30, 5.30 replay on the day and 7 o'clock next Thursday night. Catch the match. Blackwalls has a proud history presenting leading vehicle brands, extensive backup and service for a total one-stop driving experience. Holden, Mazda and HSV new and used vehicle sales, servicing, parts, paint and panel, Isuzu truck sales and service, all together in one convenient location. More selection, more value, more quality and more reasons to make Blackwalls your number one choice. Visit Blackwalls today, call the Waterloo Racecourse Road, Sopburn or online at blackwalls.co.nz. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to Stay Well Pharmacy. Whatever the season, Stay Well Pharmacy has you covered. As an integrated pharmacy, we stock all the well-known pharmacy medicines, as well as quality nutritional and herbal treatments. Our team of pharmacists and full-time naturopath are here to help you find the products and advice to suit the needs of you and your family. So come in and see us at Stay Well Pharmacy, 27 Shands Road in Hornby. Stay Well Pharmacy, live well, stay well. Hi, I'm Steve and welcome to Carpet Kingdom. At Carpet Kingdom we stock a massive range of carpets and we're also the largest vinyl stockers in the South Island. And not only do we have an excellent range in store, but you can purchase our stock online. We offer free measuring quotes, we have our own installation team, we ship nationwide, so come on down and see us at Carpet Kingdom. 312 Wilsons Road in Waltham, just off Bryham Street, or visit us online at carpetkingdom.co.nz. My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into Stand Assist Chairs from More Mobility. 
They recline back with a footrest. Then when you want to get out of them, they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice, see More Mobility, corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference More Mobility makes. Join us tonight at 6 for DW World News. Informative, lively, international news, breaking stories and global developments. DW News, weekdays at 6pm, right here on CTV. Well, the week's at an end, so here's Gordon with an update on the long holiday weekend's sporting action. With just one competition round left before the international break, the Crusaders will be looking to consolidate their lead in the New Zealand Conference of the Super Rugby competition tonight when they take on the force at AMI Stadium. The Crusaders have just one change to their side that defeated the Highlanders in dramatic fashion last weekend, with captain Kieran Reid finally deemed healthy after a lengthy layoff due to a head knock. The Honey Badgers force will be no easy test tonight, with the usual competition table dwellers putting in some inspired displays this campaign to see themselves currently sit fourth in the competition, just one point behind the Crusaders. Tonight's match gets underway at 7.35. Still with rugby, where some intriguing ties could help shape the top and bottom six for the second half of this year's Hawkins Cup competition. Top of the table Lincoln University could end Linwood's hope of a top six finish when they lock heads at Linfield, while third place New Brighton could do the same to Burnside when they meet at Rugby Park. Other games see Belfast at home to high school old boys, Shirley are at home to Christchurch, Sumner take on second place Marist Albion at St Leonard's and University do battle with Sydenham at Islam. The Rally of Canterbury takes place this weekend, featuring as the third round of the National Championship, where current national champ Richard Mason will be looking for his third straight win to start the year. This year's rally will get underway on Saturday night, with two stages in the dark, before six further stages on Sunday. The local charge will be led by Rangiora's Matt Summerfield, who currently sits second in the championship. Spectator maps will be available at the ceremonial start, which gets underway at the Palms tomorrow at 4.45. The Mainland Tactics will be looking to end yet another unsuccessful season in the Trans-Tasman Netball League on a high on Sunday, when they take on the Adelaide Thunderbirds in Adelaide. After their loss last weekend, the Tactics confirmed their fourth wooden spoon finish in five years. Queen's Birthday Monday is good news for basketball fans, with the Canterbury Rams featuring at home to the Taranaki Mountaineers. The Rams' return to the National League has had little success yet, with the Rams still looking for their first win at Cal Stadium. Monday's match could be the one. Tip-off is at 3.30. And finally tonight, it's another weekend of quality schoolboy rugby here on CTV, with the weekend's featured press cup match seeing Lincoln High at home to St Thomas's. Coverage of the match can be seen here on Sunday at 12 o'clock, with a replay at 5.30. You're up to date with the latest in local sport. I'm Gordon Finlater for CTV Sport. If you're driving around the central city, CTV's traffic update will assist you navigating the repairs taking place. Hello travellers, to help you plan your journey around the central city, here's a few tips on how to avoid the jams this weekend. Major work will be undertaken on Bealey Avenue at the Bealey Ave and Madras intersection. This means it will be down to a single lane of traffic from Barbados Street to Madras for those travelling towards the park. No right turn will be permitted from Bealey Avenue right into Madras Street while this work takes place. This will be in place from early Saturday morning until 6am Tuesday and we advise this will be particularly busy from 11am to 3pm on Saturday and Sunday. 
We recommend avoiding Billy Avenue over the weekend and if you're travelling towards the park, use Kilmore Street to Park Terrace and then right into Harper Avenue. To keep up to date on what's happening with the Central City roads, stay tuned, keep watching CTV News first at 5 and in the meantime visit the Transport for Christchurch website. And a wee reminder that uh, we will need some new music for our weather next week. Now, if you have a suggestion as to the sort of music you'd like to hear underneath the weather, email it to us or visit our Facebook page and let us know what you'd like to hear. Finally tonight then, your regional weather for the long weekend. Kia ora everybody. Well, it was a sunny day around Canterbury today. Let's take a look at the estimated temperatures. Timidu had 12 degrees today, Tamuka and Geraldine both on 12 degrees. Ashburton 12 degrees for your Friday, Methvin also had 12 degrees, Rakaia 12 degrees for you, Darfield had 12 degrees today, Leeston and Rolleston both on 12 degrees, Lincoln also on 12 degrees today and Christchurch, you guessed it, 12 degrees for you. And Akaroa the same for you with a sunny day on 12 degrees. Out in North Canterbury, Kaipui, Rangiora and Emily also all on 12 degrees for Friday. Taking a look inland, Colverton and Hemna Springs, you both were on 13 degrees today and 13 degrees for Cheviot. And travelling further up along the east coast, Kaikoura, a chilly day for you with 11 degrees. Let's take a look at the weather for Saturday. Timaru, mostly fine and sunny tomorrow with frost morning and at night, and you will have light winds. Tonight's low, well, it's going to get chilly with minus 3 and tomorrow's high 13. Ashburton, fine but cool Saturday in store with clear skies and light winds. Tonight's going to be cold for you as well with minus 3, but tomorrow look forward to 13 as your high. Christchurch, fine and cool in the city too with plenty of sunshine and light variable winds. Frosty at night and you can expect an overnight low of minus 3 as well and tomorrow's high 13 degrees. Kaikoura, mostly fine and sunny tomorrow with cold temperatures and light southwesterly winds. Tonight's low you can expect minus 3 as well, tomorrow's high 13 degrees. A fine day is in store for the rest of Canterbury, but overnight temperatures will be very, very cold. Let's take a look at the temperatures we can expect. Methvin, you'll have 13 degrees and 13 is expected in Rakaia. Darthfield, you can expect 13 degrees tomorrow and Leeston, 13 degrees for you also. Rolleston and Lincoln, 13 degrees for you as well and Akaroa, 13 degrees expected for you. And out in North Canterbury, Kaipoi and Rangiora, 13 degrees is set for your Saturday. Amberley also have 13 expected there. Colverton, Hamner Springs and Cheviot, a fine day ahead and you will also have 13 degrees. Looking ahead for Canterbury, mostly fine and sunny through to next Wednesday. Cool daytime temperatures however, and there will be frosts around at night. Light north easterly winds are expected also. Fine with high cloud increasing on Thursday, mild with moderate northeasterly winds. And that's your weather update for Friday. Enjoy the rest of your evening and have a great weekend. Well, it's uh, disappointing to think that it's going to be very, very cold at night, but the payoff is those glorious uh, sunny days over the next uh, five or six days. So it looks as though we're going to have fantastic weather for our long holiday weekend. Thanks for your company. Um, I'm Grant Mangan. Have a great weekend. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.